I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke has retired. I think the story you're about to see is important because of the point it makes concerning America's fighting man. Certainly, the basic ingredients of courage, intelligence, and equipment play vital roles in combat. But the one factor too often overlooked is understanding a mutual appreciation of each other's problems, even though the natural fighting sphere of each may be totally different. The case in point is exemplified by the events on a patrol of the USS Nautilus. This is our story's starting place, the Hawaiian Islands. Pearl Harbor in the fall of 1943 home base of the submarine force Pacific Fleet, which was quickly proving its worth against a formidable enemy. The USS Nautilus, one of the ships of that fleet, was in for refitting after a hazardous mission. Hardly anything new for the Nautilus. Pretty good refit, Captain. Not bad. Almost as good as new, I'd say. Don't have to be. I know that tone. It says, ask no questions. The captain, Commander William D. Irvin of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and his executive officer, Lieutenant Commander R.B. Lynch of Centronelle, Alabama, were two very good reasons for the impressive record of the Nautilus. And that record was about to become even more impressive. Come on already, let it go. Don't rattle me. Step softly, men. Johnny Landon, gunner's mate of the Nautilus, is shooting. That ain't no deck gun, Pappy. Knock it off, Lenny. Did I needle you when you were shooting? I can still win. Reduction like that because I'm two bits ahead. It ain't the money. I know. Johnny, if there's a better guy around, I never saw him. But you got a thing about winning that throws me, absolutely fractures me. Everybody likes to win. Oh, not like you. With you, it's a, a mania. Who's making the production now? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Everything you do, you gotta win. You gotta be the best. Like this. Any other guy would just be killing time, relaxing, but not you. Stinking pinball game, that's all it is. And yet you gotta beat me. You ain't gonna talk me out of winning. Eight hundred, you still lose. I'm tired of playing anyway. Let's go back to the ship. Look, Johnny, you lost the game. Came in second best. Big deal. Did it hurt? Change anything? Okay, stop with the curbstone analysis. It's illegal without a doctor's license. Let's go back to the ship. I'll play your game of Acey Ducey. I know I can take you. Come on. How about three out of five? That way you know who's the best player. Hey, look. How about that for a weird sight? Marines, what are they doing on the Nautilus? I wonder. What company? I don't know. They getting settled below, all right? Kane and Tully are handling them, sir. They'll be crowded, but we'll manage. It'll be just as crowded for them, Ozzy. Well, we got a long way to go and a lot of work to do. We'll shove off as soon as everyone's aboard. Aye, aye, sir. That's not gonna help you on a sub, mister. Johnny! Johnny, <laughs> what are you doing? Are you on this tub? You kidding? Captain, don't make a move without me. Oh, Lenny Greer, my brother Lou. Hi, how are you? Well, what do you know about this? My own little brother. I... Oh, I'm sorry, kid. It slipped out. It's been a long time. Sure, Lou. Oh, it's great to see you. Just great. What's all this about? Well, who knows? They told us to pack up, and here we are. Looks like you guys are going to give us a lift someplace. Great. Maybe you'll see how a real outfit works now. Well, you haven't changed a bit, have you, Johnny? Go on, give me a hand with this gear, will you? Less than one hour later, the USS Nautilus moved quietly away from the docks of Pearl Harbor, heading southwest across the Pacific. In addition to our full complement of 102 officers and men, 
she carried 78 guests. They were officers and men of the 5th Corps. Every man aboard shared one thought in particular, that the Nautilus was headed into something important, something big. But only one man really knew, knew the full size of the job to come and the risks involved. So that's the deal. Sounds big, Captain. It'd hardly be any bigger. Full-scale attack on Taro. Combined land, sea, and air operation. We're just one part of it. Our big job is to land those Marines on Apomama. You mean there's more? The Marines are just the last part of it. There's a strike at Bacho first. We draw observation duty there. I guess somebody's got to do it. Yeah, but there's a hook this time. Just take a close look at that operation order and chart. There's going to be a lot of ships in the Bacho area. Our orders prevent us from firing, but we won't be immune to attack. Sitting duck. The polite term is observation duty. The Nautilus was indeed only one part of the attack being readied against Tarawa. And all component parts of the operation moved steadily to their assigned parts of the battle area. But no matter how varied the equipment or how plentiful, in the last analysis, it is always a man upon whom the battle depends. And as fighting men know, one of the worst parts of battle is often the waiting. Aboard the Nautilus, there was plenty of that. You gonna play it or not? No, sorry. Guess it's this heat. Ten days is a long time to be cooped up. Get him. You've never had it so good. A taxi ride all the way to ringside. Weren't for us, you'd be walking. Oh, look, what's bugging you, Johnny? Me? He said that... All he said was that it's hot. It is. Now, why do you have to go making a great big my father can lick your father thing out of it? Oh, the heat makes everyone edgy. Well, let's play, huh? Still your play. Guess my luck's working. <laughs> you sure got the touch, Marine. You're beating our brains out. That's enough for me. I've uh, got some other things to do. What's the matter with your brother, Lou? Did I say anything? No. What's bothering him was said a long time ago. I guess that makes two of us who can't sleep, huh? You know, you don't have to be a mind reader to spot a guy who's got something bugging him. You know, one time I took a correspondence course on how to be a private detective. It was great for deducing things. You know, when something like this. You're Johnny's buddy? Presto, you're worried about Johnny. Pretty good course. What makes him do it, Lou? Great guy, except he competes. Makes a career. You like oatmeal, he likes cornflakes. You like bowling, he's got to push billiards. I'm a Marine. So he's got to break his back trying to prove that Sub's got it all over the Marines. With him, nobody rests, just competes. Even when there's no competition. It's just the way he is, I guess. But why? I don't know, I guess maybe I got some of the blame coming for that. I'm his older brother. Things come pretty easy. Johnny's always figured that he's had a top man. He's never stopped trying. I guess tomorrow we go out and see some daylight, huh? Now, let's go hit the sack. I'd like to be ready. Ajo should be sitting out there. Level off at periscope, Deb. I have props up there, pretty far away. You'll hear plenty of them. 60 feet. Up scope. Patriots out there all right, and our boys are pounding it good, but we've got us a problem. 
We've got to wait till it's over to make our observations. But the attack goes on too long. That's the rub. We'd be late at Abomama, upset the time schedule. And coming in late, we might just walk into the fire of the guns of our own fleet. Nice choice. What do we do? No choice. The assault force tomorrow needs those observations. We wait. Through the long day, the Nautilus lay offshore, waiting for the attacking force to complete its work. Every passing moment added to the task facing Captain Irvin, and daylight was fading when the assault was finally over. All surface craft have pulled out. Wish we were going with them. Any daylight left, Captain? Not much, but it'll have to do. Assault force still needs that information. Steady on new course 180. Steady 180. It's going to take time, but it's got to be done. And while submerged, there may still be some fight left on that island. It did take time. Cruising slowly at periscope depth approximately 800 yards off the beach line, Captain Irvin gathered his information in the only way left open to him. What he saw was anything but reassuring. The damage done by the attacking force, not nearly as extensive as hoped for. Obstructions such as traps and nets were still in place and formidable. A steel observation tower was still standing. Many pillboxes appeared to be completely undamaged and ready to give a good account of themselves when the next assault came. It was indeed important information. It's a rough island. It's still a problem. Yeah, we had to get this, but it really put us in a bind. We've got to get out of here and get this report off, but look. Here's us. To the west, carriers, cruisers, and destroyers. To the east, 50 to 60 assault ships, keyed up for tomorrow's landings and trigger happy. Tarawa boxes us off to the north, and this atoll to the south. Stop it all off, we're running way behind. It's getting real dark, Captain. Now, that's the point. Our own ships will think we're enemy now. We'll run submerged till we get out of range of the shore guns. Batteries are low, we could use a charge. We could use a lot of things. What we need most is luck. They knew that the destroyer probing with her sound search gear above them was one of ours, and it had them worried. Our destroyers were less liable to miss in an attack. Fortunately, she failed to detect them and steamed away. Polly says we've got to have a battery charge now, sir. We'd better go on up then. What's the identification signal for 10 o'clock? I just looked it up. It's a green star. I want Tully and that signal gun up on the bridge with me, and tell him to be sure to check the color. Aye, aye, sir. Not till we need it. No sense of disposing our position before we have to. No, sir. You sure you checked the color? Just did, sir. It's green. And the other color, and it's goodbye ball game. That light below can fool you. It's green, sir. Got the observation report off, sir. Well, that's one job done. Make out anything? Not even white caps. Don't hear any sound of surf. It would help. It's near that reef, and we've got trouble. Rocket. It's red. It was green. It was green. I checked it. Clear the bridge. Clear the bridge.
Call it out in the book. Damn it. Water coming through cracks in the pressure hole, Captain. Bad? It's worse in the motor room. Saw water line broken. Motor room bill just flooding rapidly. We're very heavy aft, sir. Well, if the pumps can't handle it, you better get a bucket brigade working. Aye, aye, sir. How are you coming, Anderson? Pressure's building up, sir. But use a shove. Connors, help him. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, you and your ideas! What you're doing ain't in the book, either! You still hear us? I just want to tell you the gyro compass is acting erratic, sir. Well, if you really want to worry, start thinking about that shell lodged in the superstructure. That's a dud, Captain. Yeah, but there's no way of telling how long it's going to stay one. Funny bit. They keep changing the bit players, but the star don't even get a rest. What are you trying to do? Push me into this? Got the leak in the motor room stop, sir. Pump's going full blast. Bucket brigade working anyway. 200 feet. Theoretically enough to crush the hull. I never did like theory. 210 feet. It's gonna be all right. She's inching back up. Still stern heavy, sir. One miracle at a time. I'm going to take a look at the men. See how they're taking it. Do anything for you, Captain? Just wanted the men to know there's nothing to be concerned about. We'll be up on the surface soon. Nothing at all to be upset about. You're not upset, are you, sir? Well, putting it this way, Captain, uh, I'm not upset. But this is the wildest place to try and dig a foxhole. Gyro's definitely okay, Captain. Pumps are getting better control. Things are looking up. Who's kidding who, Ozzy? Shell in the superstructure. May never go or go any minute. I can't gamble with so many men aboard. It's got to be disarmed. Maybe the Marines carry an ammo expert. Oh, if I checked. How about our crew? I checked, too. All he says is a kid named Landon. Johnny Landon, gunner's mate. Knows his stuff. I can't order this. It's a volunteer job. It's a spoiled volunteer. All you have to say is someone can do it better. Minutes after the Nautilus broke surface, the delicate job of disarming the shell in the superstructure was begun. There was only one way to reach it, just as there was but a single way to disarm it. All Captain Irvin could lend now was encouragement. The Nautilus and every life aboard her were in the hands of a young boy. I don't even want this for a souvenir. You look like a guy who's got problems instead of a hero. Thinking. 
Look at that thing with the shell. There wasn't a guy aboard who didn't seem proud of me, who didn't make a fuss. If somebody else had done it instead of me, I'd have been jealous. What's wrong with me, Lou? It took more guts to admit that than it did to disarm that shell. There's nothing wrong with you, Johnny. It just takes some guys a little longer to grow up, that's all. And I think you just took the fuse out of that problem, too. Less than 24 hours later, the Nautilus lay off its destination, the island of Afamana. But even now, a job was not over. She was to remain in the area should the Marines need additional food, ammunition, or any other kind of help. They're all in the boats, Captain. They're good men. We've got some pretty good men, too. I had to refuse aid who wanted to go ashore and fight alongside the Marines. For two days, those aboard the Nautilus waited. Two anxious days without word from the Marines. And then contact was made and a request. The Nautilus could be of inestimable help by bombarding with her deck guns. Would she help? She helped, and the accuracy of her fire freed the pinned down Marines and allowed them to move ahead to get on with the job they'd come so far to do. That night, two wounded men were brought back to the Nautilus. Lou Landon was one of them. Stop worrying, will you? Sure, sure. Try and stay with it, Hunger. Huh, I didn't come this far for nothing. You're gonna make it, Lou, I know. I'm trying to look it, will you? Things will work out, Johnny. How's it coming, Landon? I was just telling him. I'll make it. We want to make sure of it. We've located a hospital ship in the area, and we're heading for it. They'll really take care of you. Thanks. Stay with him, Johnny. That's an order. Aye, sir. See, Johnny? Things will work out. It's just a matter of letting them. But the real end of the Nautilus story came later, after the Nautilus had returned to her base at Pearl Harbor. The scene was the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, where fighting submariners were given two-week rest periods before being sent back to battle. This time, the procedure was slightly varied. Oh, hi, Ozzy. Kevin, heard we had a slight fuss in the hotel last night. What happened? We got us quite a crew. They figure those Marines went the whole patrol with us, are just as entitled to luxury as they are. I got to admit, I go along with them. So they tried to check a third of them in as crew members. <laughs> <laughs> How'd they do that? We only had so many rooms. Get this, a third of the crew went out to Marine Barracks to live in their place. How do you like that? What do you know? They deserve a rest, Captain. Can't we do something? I just did. I spoke to Admiral Lockwood. He's having the whole crew move into the hotel and all the Marines. <laughs> what is it? I was just thinking about the poor enemy. Poor? Sure, that's the word. They haven't got a chance. Not against men like that. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. You've just seen the story of the Nautilus' most unusual war patrol. Now I'd like to introduce the man who was actually her executive officer, Captain R.B. Lynch, United States Navy. Wonderful to see you, Ozzie. An amazing story. They were pretty amazing men, all of them. You know, at dinner last night, you said something about the American fighting man that really impressed me. Mind repeating it? Well, simply that few of them ever bother to assess their own value, but they sure recognize it fast in the next fellow. Understanding covers better than anything else, I guess. Sure makes them work together. That's about as well as I've ever heard it put. And you're certainly not going to get any argument out of me. Didn't think I would. I think I want to thank you for providing us this exciting story and for taking the time to come over in person. It's been a pleasure. Be with us again next week when the silent service brings you another exciting submarine story. Take her down the lofty line Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean wide From down, down underneath the sea Faith and force will pass the word In the future Thank you.
Yeah. 